Welcome back everyone. Today on the bench I have this stereo tube amplifier. And it doesn't really fit into the shot that well, does it? But it's the second amplifier I bought off of Craigslist. I bought them both at the same time from the same guy. The first one you already seen, the 6V6 mono amplifier, which I reviewed, uh, I don't know, about a month or so ago. Well, this is a stereo uh, 6BQ5 or EL84 output. And we're going to hook it up and test it and everything. I paid $20 for this one. The other one was $10. So I guess uh, double the channels, double the price. But, you know, 10 bucks isn't too, or 20 bucks isn't too bad for a tube amplifier, especially when you get into the cost of transformers. It has a pretty hefty transformer and, you know, output transformers. And tubes themselves are not cheap. So uh, we'll hook this thing up. But first, there is a little problem here. You probably were staring at it the whole time, some of you tube guys. This tube, the getter, is turned white. It has gone to atmosphere. It was working fine when I got it. I used it a couple times, and I noticed a blue glow, and it was sparking. So I shut it down quick. Never operate an amp under that condition. Heavy current can burn up cathode resistors and the fine primary windings of the output transformer. So yeah, what happened here is, and I see that a lot with these miniature tubes. The, uh, are we gonna focus or are we not gonna focus? There we go. Uh, yeah, you might be able to see it. There's a crack that goes across the bottom of the tube and I see that a lot. Usually it starts out and the thermal cycling just spreads it open and yeah, you can kind of see it there. And lets the air in, which is not a good thing. So somewhere, here it is. I went to Parts Express and uh, asked for their cheapest EL84. And they gave me the Sovtech for around 11 bucks or so. And it's nice and new and seems to work okay. So we'll pop it in here and give it a listening test. I guess I should go over the amp real quick before I hook it up. It has a power, these weird bullet type control knobs right and left volume outputs this uh, Sonotone 12AT7 the two uh, EL84's has a rectifier tube and this was modded the guy said the uh, choke here was added it's got a Sprague filter capacitor and let's see if I can Take a look under the hood here. All new resistors, all new capacitors. So I don't have to do anything really. They audio filed it even. They put these WEMA interstage coupling capacitors in. They even have grid stopper resistors in there. But yeah, it's not a lot to it, but it has been upgraded. Okay, so now I will hook it up and we'll give it a little listen. Okay, it's all hooked up. The guy said it came out of an old console. So I wonder if this transformer also supplied filament and plate voltages to the receiver portion as well. That might be why the transformer seems kind of large for its purpose here. Okay. I'm going to turn the power on. Okay, I put some light on it so you can see it. When I turn it on, at first it'll draw heavy current because the filaments are cold. Then the wattage will drop. And then as the bias comes up, the wattage will increase again. So let's see. 62. Now it's dropping.
Now it's slowly coming up. Starting to stabilize around 61 watts. Okay, turn the lights out so you can see the glow of the filaments. As usual, I have the music player going into the preamp, goes into the power amp, and onto the speakers. I'm going to try something different. I'm going to record it with my uh, Olympus LS7 PCM recorder here. See what it sounds like. Extremely nice thing about this amp, absolutely no hiss. It is very low gain though, and no power supply hum or anything. This amp is extremely quiet. Here is a schematic of the amplifier. I sketched out one channel, the other channel will be identical, and also the power supply section. If you ever poke around one of these amplifiers, you want to be very careful they use pretty high voltages. So we have 280 volts at this point. So yeah, it looks like a pretty typical amplifier. You have the driver stage and the output pentode. Looks like some feedback here. Seems that they're running it fairly lean, 30 milliamps. Normally you would see 40, 45, maybe upwards of 50 milliamps on the EL84. The good thing with that is the tubes should have a pretty long life, though our output power is probably not going to be that much. And we will measure that momentarily. Okay, I have the 8 ohm loads connected, both channels driven, maximum clean power before clipping. Get it set up on the scope here. One kilohertz signal. Okay, we'll find the uh, maximum point just before clipping. And say right around there. 4.1 volts. So we're putting out 2.1 watts per channel. Yeah, I guess with the lower current, I about what I would have expected having uh, seen that other amplifier that was doing about the same okay I'm running the 20 to 100 Hertz sweep right there's 20 and the waveform cleans up and it's pretty much at the peak you know maybe it rolls off just a tad at 20 but surprisingly good low-end response frequency response it's not really changing here we're at 64 Hertz now and a hundred Hertz and it'll just restart Okay, I'm running the 20 to 20 kilohertz sweep. Looks like we are rolling off a little bit. At 10 kilohertz, we have rolled off quite a bit. Yeah, we lost about 6 dB at uh, real high frequencies, though. So, yeah, it does roll off, and the other amp did that as well. Okay, we'll take a look at distortion next. Here's the distortion. As usual, we have the 1 kilohertz fundamental, 4.5 kilohertz pilot signal. We have a very large spike of second harmonic and a 
uh, about a 1.2 or 3 percent third harmonic showing yeah, that's a pretty tall harmonic we're at nearly clipping though turning the signal down reduces that significantly it's still about two percent or so the third harmonic is gone but as I turn the signal down the uh, second harmonic diminishes yeah that's par for the course for a single element single ended amplifier tube type amplifier it's not really using any sophisticated feedback mechanism so you're definitely going to have that single ended tube sound with these amplifiers that's for sure but like I always say the second harmonic is something you'd be hard pressed to hear even at larger levels of distortion these output transformers don't have tapped secondaries so it's really meant to be used with a single load impedance so I tried 4 ohms and 16 ohm loads with 4 ohm loads I got 1.4 watts of output and about the same with 16 ohm loads so that tells me with the 8 ohm loads I was getting 2.1 watts so this amplifier was meant to be used with 8 ohm loads so there you have it, a nice little stereo 6BQ5 or EL84 tube amplifier. Has very low noise, no power supply hum, but with that it has pretty low gain. It needs quite a bit of pre-amplification going in. Sounds good to my ears. And that's it. Thanks for watching.